Hello everyone and welcome to a special Christmas episode of Blue Tango's Game Development Show. There'll be plenty of game making to follow, but first, as always, things are going to get very weird. Merry Christmas.
It was the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a game dev was stirring, not even the QA guy. The lines were coded, commented with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas would do the work instead. Bob the programmer was nestled all snug in his bed, while nightmares of object-oriented programming danced in his head. And Dottie in her rage, and I in my 100 yen cap, had just settled our fight for a long winter's vacation. The French call it Mubedra. The Australians and Californians may call it Mataro, but the Spanish call it Monastrell. Get back which to is work. Odd. What do you mean, get back to work? I'm doing your Christmas special, Grim. Oh, this is pretty special. That's not a Christmas book. Yeah, I know I'm reading from a book on wine. Uh, it's called Atmosphere. Let's chat more game dev. All right, all right. I'll do some game dev, even though it's Christmas. But not for you. For the good people out there watching this. So let's see. I have to do some game dev on Christmas, which means I should do something Christmassy. Ah, uh, unfortunately, my game is about cowboys and guns. Uh, I can't go shooting Santa. Well, I guess unless he shoots first. Uh, but snowmen are fair game, so I think that's where I'll start. Let's see. This is a special episode. Uh, not doing this one live. This is just for YouTube. Um. What's different from the live episodes is that I'm going to try to do something different with this and go all the way from the planning stages 
to the end of the level. Obviously, I can't make a complete game from scratch in just a short amount of time. Uh, but I want to give like a preview to those of you out there who have been interested in the show but don't want to follow for you know two hours a week or something. Just want to kind of compress it into a format. If I can figure out how to get things to you know fast forward and do all that stuff, maybe do a little editing work. Something I can't do every week uh, because of lack of time. But you know because it's Christmas, let's see if I can pull it off. Uh, hopefully this will be interesting to you guys out there who haven't been following the show, or if this is your first episode of the show. Welcome to a very weird place to start. Um, so let's get started. Usually um, usually I go over to my task list, my to-do list over at Trello.com and start you know figuring out which tasks I need to do this episode and etc. So if you want to see the live game dev show, uh, you can see old episodes on YouTube or come on over to Twitch TV, but uh, this episode's a little different. So I'm going to start with planning. So I am going to go over to Trello, but it's going to be an empty list for today's episode while I plan it out. So let me jump to my desktop, which is much less Christmassy than what I had, and head on over to Project Spaghetti's Trello site. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I keep basically all my to-do stuff here on uh, Trello.com under Project Spaghetti, if you search for Trello.com, or if you search for Trello and Project Spaghetti, you can find this list. I've done, at least up through the Christmas episode, I've done 25 episodes so far, uh, plus I think an intro episode, but that's only on YouTube. Um, and, you know, every week I go through this. Episode 26 is for next time. Uh, just did that this morning. Let's see. So for the Christmas episode, I do want to do snowmen, uh, as opposed to shooting Santa, which would be very unfestive. But to do that, I need to do a little bit of planning first. Kind of thought about this in advance, but you know, the planning process usually is about you know drawing a few things out, seeing how it might work. The thing I haven't done so far in the Project Spaghetti Cowboy game is to have an enemy that splits apart. Uh, when the enemy, sh oh, when, not the enemy, when the cowboy shoots them, snowmen would be perfect for this because most snowmen, well, if you live in most places, uh, snowmen tend to have, well, if I can make circles that are somewhat balanced, they tend to have three three parts. Here in Japan, for some reason, the snowmen have two, but I'm not going to worry about uh, the Japanese version, even though I'm in Japan. I am going to do three. Uh, mainly for gameplay reasons. What I'm thinking is what I could do with this is have right now the the game is all about a cowboy top-down 2D cowboy shooter uh, where the bullets fired bounce around with a pinball mechanic and so far most of the enemies are enemies that can block and shield and do s sorts of stuff like that but one hit and they're dead. The snowman's going to be a little different in that it's going to depend on where the bullet hits. What I'm thinking is change up the AI a little bit, kind of throw the player off their game. Uh, if the bullet hits the head, then, you know, take off the head part, change the AI for the remaining two bits, and speed it up a little bit. What I'm thinking is, so that the player doesn't get too confused with too many patterns, what I'm thinking, let me just save all these for posterity. What I'm thinking is start off with three. There you go with my circles again. Start off with three, and depending on what the player hits, like if the player hits the head, then I've got this body part, and if the player hits one of those again, then it kind of evolves out to these other body parts. So that there's kind of this tree, and I think the normal snowman uh, in general, this one's going to be slow. If it's got two body parts, it's going to be medium. And if it's just got one body part, it's going to be fast. Now, I think what's going to make sense to a player is if, uh, if the thing, if the snowman has a head, horrible, horrible carrot nose there, if the snowman has a head, then it knows where the player is, and it's going to try to seek out the player. If it doesn't have a head, then it's just going to go randomly about. Uh, the speed will still change, but whether it's actively seeking the player out 
or whether it's just kind of wandering around, that's going to be varied up depending on you know, how many body parts it has left. This is going to be an interesting thing to implement because I have to do all the steps that I do usually over the course of a month to make a new level, for example, in one episode. So this is going to be rather compressed, but I will explain what I'm doing as I go along. Maybe fast forward through some parts where it's just me pixel drawing and stuff like that. Uh, so let's do some tasks here. To be able to do this, obviously the first thing I need is the basic sprites. I've been working with rough sprites so far, so I'm not going to worry about brushed up sprites or anything like that. That'd be probably too much for you guys anyway, so you've got things to do on Christmas, right? Uh, so I'm going to need a left, right facing three version, so that's one. I'm going to need the two and then the one. Then I'm also going to need a version without the head. Uh, and let's see, the other possibilities are blow out the middle section so it has the head and the bottom but no hands. Uh, let's see, so there's the head, the middle, the head, the bottom, the bottom and the middle. So there's three different variations of that medium one. And then the fast one, there's three variations of that too. So all in all, that's seven new sprites that I have to make for the snowman. So let's put that in the task list. First thing is uh, snowman. Enemy. Uh, rough sprites. And hopefully a snowman shouldn't be too hard to draw. So, But there are quite a few sprites that need to be done. So uh, well, let's, let's, uh, let's go comfortable with it. Half an hour. We'll see if my Photoshop skills are up to it, especially late at night on Christmas here. Uh, the next thing is I always have a background, so I need to have a background. That shouldn't actually take that long because it's snow. Snow looks like snow. Shouldn't be too hard. It'll be just a rough background, of course. So let's see. Christmas stage background rough and that again is a graphics task so I'll set that to that oh uh, let's see once I have those do I need anything else I don't think the snowman's going to do much except for melee attacks which means it's going to run at the player and try to attack them which if you've seen you know the the game dev show would be kind of like the ghosts or scorpion enemies uh, so there's not a whole lot to do with that I do have to add the enemy into uh, Game Maker Studio, which is the program I use to make uh, Project Spaghetti, the game. So add object. And let's see, probably the trickier thing, let's see, snowman, determine where the bullet hit because there's those three chunks, uh, so I have to know which of those three chunks the bullet hit for me to figure out which snowman to produce. Uh, let's see, what else do I need to do? I do need to separate the AI based on that state. Um, there's two ways I could go about this. I could create, uh, let's see, the seven variations of snowman as different objects and just switch to a different object when I need to. Or I could try to store it all in the same object and just divide up, you know, what sprites it has to be using. I suspect since the logic is pretty much the same except for just where the what target the, uh, the snowman's going after, I'll just stick it all into one. And then if I need to, I'll split it out later. Uh, that's going to be a little tricky, so uh, let's see. AI branching. That just means if it's got a head, search out, search, out, uh, search out the player. I should just say Merry Christmas every time I flub a line. Um, flub my speech. Let's see. Snowman. What else would the snowman need to do? There's the branching. I guess there's the state. Update. I think that's pretty good for now. Usually I have weeks between episodes to think about all the little bits that I'm missing as I as they come up, but this is all one episode. 
So let's see what I can do with this. Uh, if I need to add tasks later, I will do that. Uh, but for now, let's jump right into it. So that should be all I need to do with that stuff. So, you know, if you've seen episodes in the past, you know that I go through these. I did the snowman enemy rough, that's done. Christmas stage background, that's done. Christmas tree bumper, that's done. And the present bumper was done before that, so I'll just keep them in order. Now it's time to actually jump into the game and start adding game stuff. Let me take a drink of my Christmas water here to make sure my Christmas voice keeps going. And head on over to Game Maker Studio where I'm making the game. Project Spaghetti is the game. For those of you who haven't seen this before, uh, I'll just take you on a quick tour of it uh, so that you know what I'm kind of working with here. So it is a very retro-styled game. Like I said before, uh, it is kind of modeled after the Commodore 64 palette uh, because it's close to my heart. So you start out, you're a cowboy wandering around. You can duck. You can fire bullets at enemies. You can duck the bullets as well. The more the bullet bounces around, gets dodged everything else, the faster it gets, and the more points it's worth when it hits someone. Uh, you can also... Well, when you lose a life, you lose your clothes. So one more hit and it's game over. But you can continue. This is the Halloween level, the graveyard level. The ghosts that I was using for the snowman base. Until you ring this bell, the bullets just go through them. And once the bell stops ringing, they go back to normal. Uh, but the drawback to ringing that bell is the fact that the bats start coming down, and the ghosts get mad at you and start to chase you. The next level that I did was uh, in November, the desert level. With this one, there's these scorpions that are in here. 
If you shoot them from the front, they're always facing you. They get very upset and they chase you. Uh, the bones are just regular bumpers, but the cacti, if you hit them, they start spraying out deadly spines. And this is the fourth level, which was more of a November-December thing. Shielded aliens. You fire out lasers that reflect off of crystal bumpers at 45 degree angles. So the goal of this is to get the aliens to hit themselves like that, take advantage of the shield being down, and kill them. So that is the game in a nutshell. Uh, what I need to do first is add all these sprites into Game Maker Studio. Uh, just for those of you who've never used Game Maker Studio before or haven't seen it before, it's a really good program for making 2D games. Uh, makes it really simple. Um, most of the stuff you can do through like this uh, GUI editor, like for example, objects, like the player. You know, when you create the player, do this stuff. When alarms go off, do this stuff. Most of it you can do visually, but you know, you do have to do some scripting in it to get things to, to behave the way you want them to. So it's not completely easy. But it's definitely a lot easier than, you know, trying to dive into something like Unity or uh, Unreal Engine. And the uh, standard version, I think, is free. Uh, professional version costs money, but as you can see here, there's a holiday sale. They put it on sale all the time, so if you're interested, you can always pick it up during a sale. But uh, first thing I need to do is add a new enemy type for the snowman. And start adding sprites. Next thing is going to be to actually make that level. So let's copy over the night level. Duplicate. Call this room snow. Pretty much everything's okay, I just have to replace all of the things that are going on in here, so change it out to snow. Probably change some of these bumper placements. Right now this is just a grid. Um, these red circles indicate where those bumpers go in, so like the presents and the Christmas trees will go in wherever these red ones are. Blue ones indicate where power-ups show up. The pink triangles indicate where enemies can move. So the map is basically a combination of that stuff. Let's move these around a little bit. If I'm going to have a tree, I kind of want it in the middle. So let's put it there. Presence can be off to the sides a little bit. Let's do kind of a present in the corner there. And just so they don't get too close to the edge of the screen, let's bring them in a little bit. Okay, I think that gives me a start. So I've got room snow. Now I need to add this to the game uh, so that it knows to go to room snow. That's going to take some scripts. Next thing is going to be, well, the bumpers are going to be easiest, so let's let's do that first. So 
next up is to actually make the enemy. Uh, the closest thing is probably going to be the ghost. Let's see, what is going to be the closest thing? Actually, the scorpion might be pretty close too. But the behavior changing from wandering around to chasing the player is closer to the ghost, so I think I'm going to be better served if I copy the ghost for now. Game loaded, that's a good sign. I have no idea what's going to happen when I get to level 5. First off, I need to move that bumper so the player doesn't start there. 
do have the snowman coming after the player. That's a good start. Uh, what happens when I shoot it? It does shrink. It does go faster. It does swip, uh, swap left and right when it's coming after the player. I just shot off its head. And EM Calm. Let's see. Step event, zero. Object snowman. Okay, so I'm still using Calm somewhere. Because before with the ghost, it, it would recalculate when it calmed down again, it, it would have to find another move node rather than the player. Uh, the snowman doesn't work that way. Uh, let, me, let me do that real quick. Let me get rid of that present. Let's move that out of the way a little bit. Okay. And I didn't look, but I think one of those should be a tree. Yes, okay. One of them is a tree. So the snowman is making a beeline for me. Let's see if I take off its head what happens. Yep, uh, when I take off the snowman's head it just starts kind of randomly running around. As opposed to if I leave the head it still comes after the player. But you can see, uh, if you're not careful about how you're shooting, you're going to get yourself into kind of a jam here. Because you're going to have a bunch of angry snowmen coming after you. And especially if your goal is to get a bunch of points, uh, it's going to be really hard to get a good like bounce build up or charge uh, on your gun if you've got snowmen chasing you you'll have to kind of lead them into lead them into bullets for that stuff to work grab my bullet okay it's not <laughs> now I'm in trouble uh, one thing I am noticing uh, that I do need to fix is that the player should be taking damage from the snowman, but it's not. And the reason is because I never updated the player to tell the player how to deal with snowmen. So let's do that. Move that up to the top of the screen just to make sure you guys can see it. Jump to level 5. Okay, so now I've, took, I've taken off his head, so now he's just randomly wandering around the map. Charge up my bullet. Fire. He unfortunately still has his head. So he's going to start tracking me, but I can get rid of it. Uh, so there's definitely an advantage to getting headshots, much like a first-person shooter, I guess. So definitely makes the snowman a very different kind of enemy to any of the other ones in the game. And there's one other thing I do have to check, if I can get another bullet without dying. Oh, well, there we go. Well, now that I have a full full clip, let's see what happens when I hit the Christmas tree. Yep. Behaves just like the cactus did. If you hit the Christmas tree, it fires off uh, bullets. The one thing I do want to do with that is to keep it a little festive. Uh, what should I do? It's the exact same object as the cactus bullet, so I should probably not make another object. 
what I'm thinking is rather than having this green thing fire out, it should be like, you know, the ornament shards or something firing out, which means a different color. see what happens to the Christmas tree. Yep, great. It's firing out red ornamental shards in all directions, causing all sorts of chaos because it's knocking the snowman senseless, you know, hitting him in different places, everything else. One problem with using this color for the background, it's the same as the uh, the main character. Let's fix that. Let's see how this looks. Okay. Uh, the, the, the other bonus is that the Christmas tree stands out a lot better too. Yeah. Okay, this color's fine. The character stands out. Christmas tree stands out. Presents. Simple as they are, they stand out. Awesome. So there we go. Uh, went from... Let's go to the task list. Added... Bring done over here. So, started out with the graphics. You know, started out with the plan, which was just filling up this task list. Went to the graphics, which was making a snowman enemy. Christmas stage background. Present bumper, tree bumper. And then I added all those objects into Game Maker. So I added the bumpers first, I think, because they were easy. Uh, added the uh, Christmas stage the uh, Christmas stage add basically added the stage that was just a game design task added the tree added the present added the snowman uh, did the AI branching after doing the state update stuff to tell whether it's got two balls, if it's got three balls, etc. Uh, and determined where the the bullet hits. So basically, uh, through this Christmas special, managed to get a Christmas stage going. Merry Christmas. So let's get a little more Christmassy here. Boom. There we go. Uh, thank you for watching this Christmas special. I'll, uh, I'll have to think about how to edit it, because I don't want to uh, force you guys to sit here when you should be opening presents, uh, eating hams and turkeys and vegetarian dinners, I guess if that's your thing, to celebrate Christmas. It should be nice and quick, just something you can watch while you're waiting for uh, something to cook, maybe, in the background. So I'll think about how to edit it, maybe skip over a couple of spots, maybe fast forward some spots, maybe release the whole thing as is, who knows. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, 
it's definitely different not doing it live. I miss you guys because uh, keep having you guys around in the chat definitely makes this go a lot faster. It's a lot more fun too, and even if it's in the morning when my brain's not working, the bad thing about night is my brain starts to stop working, as you've probably noticed, but uh, I hope it worked out. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a Merry Christmas, and I hope to see you, well, Saturday or next time there's an episode. Definitely hope to uh, do something there. Have a Merry Christmas. Good night.